Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the Key Concepts video series where I attempt to break down IP written key concepts in a short space of time to help supplement your actual textbooks and help you better understand the technology. Okay, so in this video the plan is to discuss EIGRP stub written. We'll break down the five main configuration settings in which stub written is configured and then we'll look at some of the effects in which on basically what happens in the network when we put these settings on the routers okay so that's the basic plan let's kick on let's do it okay so let's pull up my trusty whiteboard and let's go through it then so there are five configurations we can use change the pen color and you can think of it as s s r r and see we have static we have stop summary we have redistributed we have receive only and we have connected so very briefly, when you say EIGRP stub static, the only thing you're going to be advertising are static routes that you've got, okay? If you're advertising static routes, they will be sent in your EIGRP. If you're created a summary route, then your summary routes will be advertised, but that will be it. If you are advertising redistributed routes, so for example, if that router is connected to an OSPF domain and you're redistributing routes learn from OSPF, those will be advertised. If you have receive only, it means you're not going to be advertising anything. You're pretty much only going to be receiving routes from actual peers. You're not going to be sending any of yours yourself. If you do connected, then all that will be advertised are your connected networks. And remember, it's only connected networks which you've advertised. So think of the network command. If you just type in EIGRP stub connected and you've not advertised any with the network command, then nothing will be advertised, okay? Now you can mix and match some of these. You can't mix anything with the receive only, that's exclusive. And by default, if you type in the EIGRP stub command, the ones which will be advertised will be summary and connected. If you type in EIGRP stub connected, then only the connected ones will be advertised, summary won't. If you type in EIGRP stub summary, then the summary route will be advertised, but not the connected, okay? So if you want them both, just do EIGRP stub, okay? So that's the basic overview, the very basic overview of the five configuration types. But let's just discuss about how stub routing can help stabilize your network, okay? So let's go down here. So if we revisit our stuck and active diagram, which was this one here, if you recall, remember that we discussed that in the event that this link breaks, this route is going to send a query out and it's going to have this cascading effect. Okay, we're going to keep querying down the network and we did talk about how summarization can help this out but the other technique we can use is stub routing now what happens when we configure a stub so let's just say all these edge ones here are going to be configured as EIGRP stubs okay now what happens when we do that is that those routers say hey I'm a stub router and the connecting router so let's just focus on this transaction here when we configure this one for a stub it's going to say, hey, I'm a stub router. And this one's going to understand, okay, I won't send you any queries. Okay, so what that means is that if we configure all of these edge ones as stubs, i.e. don't query me for advertisements that you've lost, what's going to happen is, when we lose the network here, we're going to send a query out here, a query out here, a query here, query here, query here. But because all these bo all this bottom layer is effectively stubs, these routers all know don't query the bottom ones because they are only edge networks. If we've lost a network with this prefix, these routers are already telling us everything they're willing to share with us. And if it's this network, then they don't have it. So don't even bother asking them, okay? So that's the very basic overview of how we can mitigate query propagation with stub routing. So let's look at some actual hands-on configuration. Now, if you recall from the earlier video on uh, feasibility condition and so on and so forth, you'll recognize this topology, but it's been slightly modified. We've taken it the top link, okay? So let's ping from R3 to R7's loopback, which is 7.7.7.7. .7 .7 .7. 
ping from that. And we have reachability. And what I want to show you here is that the path we're taking is via gigabit 03, okay? This one is the successor path through R5. Now what I've done is the bottom path via R6, I've manipulated manually the bandwidth and delay such that the advertised distance is not less than the feasible distance of the successor route, therefore it's not meeting the feasibility condition, therefore it's not a valid backup path, and we can see that if we do the show IP EIGRP topology. We can see that for all the sevens, all we've got is the successor route. We don't have any backup feasible successors, okay? So what this means is that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut down the link on R5 so that R5 no longer has a path to all the sevens. It's going to send a query out. Now, if we had a feasible successor here via R6, it would just reply back straight away saying, listen, I've got a path and just give it straight away. We don't want that. So I've removed the feasible successor because we want to initiate the query propagation. Okay. So we're going to query out all the neighbors, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to configure R1 as a stub router and that should tell R3, listen, don't query me and we'll examine the actual scope of the query propagation when we do that. So effectively, when we shut down this link here, we should send a query from R5 to R3 saying, listen, I've lost my path to R7, do you know? R3 is not going to have anything in its topology table for a backup route because if it's lost this link, then it's lost its successor route. So it's going to send a query out, but because we've set R1 as a stub router, you'll notice that R3 is not going to query R1. It will query R2 and query R6, but not R1. We're going to limit the scope by changing that configuration. Okay, so let's go and do that. Okay, so let's first just look at the actual configuration of how to configure a stub router. So R1, really, really simple. If we just do router EIGRP1, and all you do is EIGRP stub, and that would be the basic default. We can look at the options though, and we'll see here, like I said, I'm going to leave out leak map, that's a bit more technical. You get to that in kind of CCIE level. So EIGRP stub connected, receive only redistributed static or summary. I'm just going to do EIGRP stub, which would mean that if this router happened to be advertising summary routes or connected routes, then it would still be advertising them, but only them, okay? You'll notice when I hit this, we're going to reinitiate our neighbor relationship, okay? Watch this. Peer down, peer up. Effectively, what happened is, is that R1 informed R3, listen, I'm a stub router, and R3's made a note saying, listen, okay, I'm not going to send you queries now you've told me that, okay? So let's look at the effect of what's going to happen when we shut down gigabit 01 on R5, which means that R5 can no longer get to R7's loopback. Now, after setting that configuration as a stub router, we're going to see our first clue about what's going to happen. If we go into router 3, and we just do a show IP EIGRP neighbors with detail, we'll see that our connection with R1, i.e. 10.1.1.1, we're actually connected to a connected summary stub router, therefore we're going to be suppressing queries. So straight away that's going to give you an idea of what's going to happen. But let's actually go through it and see the actual effects. Okay, now to actually inspect this behavior, let's go and debug some EIGRP packets on router 3. So if we just do a debug EIGRP packets and we'll do it for queries, okay? So that's that on. And if we go into router 5 and shut down gigabit 01, pull this up. and int gig01 and we shut that down, we'll see a bunch of queries. Now, I'm going to abstract some details and explain everything, but all you need to know is where the queries are being sent. So let's have a look at this. We can see that we're sending queries at a gigabit01 and we're also sending queries at a gigabit04. That's all we're sending queries, okay? So what does that map to? 01 and 04? That maps to 01 down this way and 04. So that meant when the link went down, R5 queried R3, and R3 only queried 2 and 6. 6 then gave a response, and now R3 can ping router 7 via R6. Now, if we wanted maximum efficiency, what we really should do is configure router 1 and router 2 as stubs, okay? That would mean that if the chain of events happened, all that would happen would be that R3 would query R6, and R6 would reply, and then we could get the path through that. Okay, doc. So, to summarise... EIGRP utilizes stub routing to conserve CPU intensive processes. It allows for greater network stability 
and greater efficiency in the network. And that is really why you want to be implementing EIGRP Stubbrooting and, of course, to get con better control over what routes you're actually advertising. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon.